Let's solve the advent of code 2021 day 24 puzzle using Go. This is a fun puzzle and a surprisingly representative partial glimpse of how compilers analyze and optimize programs. The input is a program for a machine with four integer registers that reads a 14 digit decimal number one digit at a time and decides whether to accept it depending on the value computed by the program. Zero is accept, non-zero is reject. And conveniently for us, the program is straight line code with no branches or loops. The machine has a variety of two operand instructions for add, multiply, divide, modulus, and equality test, along with an instruction to read the next input digit. And we need to start by dealing with the input, which looks like this. And I don't really feel like writing a parser, so let's just turn this into Go code. Say, if you have instruction, destination, argument, that's going to become destination equals instruction of destination comma argument. And then if you have input of destination, that's going to become destination equals input. And then we just need to make this a Go program. So we'll return Z here. And we'll make this uh, package main, package main, func compute. And there it is. So let's make that Go x.go. All right, well, it parses. So that's something. Let's see. Let's try running it. All right, obviously has some things to fill in here. We need to figure out the input. Let's give it an argument. Let's say it has an int there. And let's just try printing the result of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And that's a 14 digit number. And let's see, we still have some work to do. Uh, we need to declare w, x, y, and z. Those are ints. All right, now we need to declare these functions. So we need to say input equals a func, and returns an int. And we're going to want to keep track of where we are. We'll say i of 0, v equals m of i, i plus plus return v. All right, good, now we just need add and so on. So we say add equals func lr int, int return l plus r, and then multiply, divide, mod, quality, mol div, mod, quality, mol div, mod, quality. All right, that's pretty good. Let's just fix that, because Go is picky about these things for good reason. V return one, return zero. Bool to int. There we go. All right, so maybe that's the number of computes. We really don't know, but it's running, so that's good. But what we really want is not to compute a number, but to analyze this program and figure out how to make it return a zero. And so to do that, we really don't want to deal with ints at all. We want to deal with some sort of representation of the computed value. So let's make a representation for the computed value. Let's call it a val. And we'll say it has an opcode and maybe a numeric argument for things like input or constants, and then a left and a right side for binary operations. And then we want to make this whole thing deal with vals. So let's say change all the ints to vals. Um, and then x, y, and z are also going to be vals. In fact, all of these numbers need to be vals somehow. So let's write a converter for those. And let's just convert every numeric constant here to calling num. And then we'll write num equals func of a number. And we'll have it return val with an op num and a number n. All right, so getting there. Um, we need to return, let's return the whole list of values that we had. We don't have a model number anymore, but let's return the whole list of computed values. Um, and so to do that, this is the program, it's the list of computed values. And so at the end, we'll return prog. That's all good. Now we just need to finish actually making these functions return actual values. So here, m of i is now a different value. We have an opcode input and new number i, um, too many arguments to compute, that's reasonable. 
And now we just need to fix these. So let's make a little binary operator helper that will help us with these. And we'll do that, 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 and that. Let's see, that was star slash mod equals equals. And then the binary helper will be left op right val. And it can do return val ll op op r r. All right, great. Um, the only problem is we haven't put anything in prog. So let's write something to do that. We'll say init equals func value returning value appends to prog. And then also returns v, so we can just use a little helper here. We'll say that, and that, and that. I think those are the only places where we created a value. So let's see. Okay, that looks promising. That's a whole bunch of pointers in the program. Okay, good. Let's, uh, let's try printing each one on a separate line. Um, print v. Forget prog equals compute for those. Okay, that looks somewhat believable. So let's see. Um, what we really want is probably to have a string method on val. Let's do that ring and we'll say return well we have to change depends on the operator so if we have a num that'll be just n itself return func.sprint v.n if we have an input let's call it m m1 m2 and so on and otherwise it's a binary expression s printf let's do percent v percent v percent v v dot left v dot op v dot right see how that goes. All right, um, that goes long. Let's see, we started out okay, but then these expressions started getting more and more complicated, and it looks kind of like we're seeing the same things over and over again, where they wouldn't have gotten so long. So we need to deal with the, the possibility that, you know, a particular value gets referred to multiple times in a larger expression, and we don't want to print it multiple times. So uh, let it, let's give each value its own identifier, so we'll have a way to identify them. We'll say t equals zero, t plus plus, t dot, or v dot t equals t. So now at least we have a name for each one. Let's give it a name method. And we'll say return, let us print t v dot n. All right, and let's make an initializer method that actually shows the initializer. Um, we'll say return func dot s print. Or I guess this is the switch that we have before. That's good. But here we're going to say the names. And then for the string, let's show the actual assignment. String s print f percent v equals percent v v name and v init. All right, now let's see how our program prints. Now that, that looks reasonable. And notice this is actually a little bit different from the input because, well, first of all, we have too many t zeros. Let's figure out what happened there. t plus plus, v dot t equals t, prog equals t. How do we get so many t zeros? Is t getting reset somewhere? Init t. That's okay. Oh wait, did I print n instead of t? I did. All right, that's gonna be happier. Whoops. Let's see. That's gonna be a lot better. All right, where was I? I think I was pointing out that this looks different from the input because you know, the input has w, x, y, and z, and this just has all these numbered temporaries. And so we can sort of reverse engineer. This is w, x, y, and z, and then this is the new w that we get after the input instruction, m0, and this is the zero constant. And here, t7 is the result of the multiply. It's the new value of x. This is the old value of x and the constant, and so on. And so what we've done is we've actually turned this program, which was overwriting all these registers, into something more like a compiler's single static assignment form. 
where each value is only ever written once. And uh, in real SSA, you have to deal with loops and branches and introduce phi functions, but none of that applies here because we have straight line code. And so we just have this program now where each temporary is assigned once, and so we can do analysis on the temporary and record information and not worry about it being invalidated by some future reassignment. So that's good. This is a better form for us. It's not terribly useful. It's not terribly um, nice to read, though. I'd really like to be able to see better what these expressions are. But we saw before that if we print the whole thing recursively, it gets really, really big. And so what we want is some way to print, uh, to inline these expressions just enough. So like T10, for example, is only used that one time. It was used here in T10 plus T13. So when we print T14, it'd be nice if we could inline T10. But if there's something that's used multiple times, we can't inline that. So let's write uh, a printer that can actually be smart enough to do that. So we'll write dump of program and it's just gonna print it. And what we wanna do is an analysis to figure out when is it safe to print a temporary with its name or as the full expression and when do we have to use its name? And the answer is, well, if it's used multiple times, it's not safe. So we can just count how many times something is used and then we can just walk over the program to do it. Um, normally you do like some sort of depth first recursive traversal, but here we've already ordered the program so that the order is bottom up. And so if we want to do a, a traversal that's uh, post order where you handle the leaves and then the parent nodes, we can just walk over prog in order. It's a lot easier than having to write the recursion. We'll say count b.l plus plus and count b.r plus plus. And so now at the end, we know how many times each v has been used. And so then we can do it again and we can build up what string we should print for v. We'll say st stir equals map of val to string. And we'll say if count of v is bigger than or equal to two, then we have to use um, stir of v equals uh, v.name. And otherwise, we want to use stir of v equals v.init. And then at the end, we're going to print prog of stir, or sorry, stir of prog of len prog minus one, the very last entry in the program. We want to see its string. Um, let's not print that anymore. Let's do dump of prog. All right, the very last one is an addition. Well, that doesn't really help us too much um, because we forgot to actually print the uh, values. When we do have a name, we need to print what that name means. So we're going to have to say fump dot. You know, v.init is not right either because it shouldn't be t389. It should be whatever the expression was. So we need a little bit more work here to do. We need to say switch v.op, and if it's an input or a number, let's say var x string, then x is v.init. And otherwise, this is the same thing we had here, but we wanna do it a little bit differently. We wanna say stir of v.l, v.op, stir of v.r, so that we get the, the expanded strings when they're appropriate. And then here, if count of v is uh, too big, we're gonna wanna print a line that says what we're losing. We'll say v.name equals x and then use v.name. And otherwise we assign to x. There we go, all right. So now the final one is not just any plus, it's plus of these bigger expressions, but we've avoided the sort of exponential printing here. Okay, good. So now we can see the program in a reasonable form, which is always kind of a struggle in a compiler. And so now we can look at the program and the output and see what the compiler needs to do next. And the answer seems to be it needs to make the program a little simpler because zero times zero is clearly zero. And uh, we would rather not actually, uh, you know, we know that that's zero. And then we add T4, which is used here and here. So it's still okay that it was used that way. But you know what? If it's a constant, I, I, I want to just use it all the time. So let's say, so this count of v is bigger than 2, and v.op is not equal. You know what, well, let's move this in the switch. We'll say this. Let's do it this way. x equals that. And then we'll say x equals v.name. And then we'll leave this here. So now the switch's job is to fill in x, and then we, we do stir of v equals x. There we go. So now the constants that are used multiple times, we'll just print that multiple times, that's okay. Okay, so now we're getting somewhere. We have zero times zero plus zero mod 26, that entire thing is just zero, 
plus 14, and the entire thing is just 14, equals equals m0 equals equals 0. So it'd be nice if we could just see 14 there. So that's, that's basically the beginning of a compiler optimization pass. So let's start working on that. Um, we'll write an optimizer. We'll say func opt of prog. And the optimizers often usually still have to work in post order form where you process the leaves and then the parents. So we can just walk over prog the same way. Let's call opt of prog and then dump it. And so now we just need to walk over prog and make changes. So we're gonna wanna check each value in prog and then have a switch. And let's say if we see um, a plus, or sorry, a star, and uh, the left is a number, and the right is a number, then let's replace v with um, val of op num, and n is v.l.n plus v.r.n no, times v.r.n. Okay, let's see. Expecting comma. Oh, yeah. Okay, so we've got the zero. It used to say zero times zero plus zero, and we've gotten rid of the times, but you know, this is gonna be really annoying to write. And you know, in a language with pattern matching, uh, that would be really nice to have patterns, but we don't have pattern matching. But let's define a pattern matcher of our own. Um, it won't be quite as nice as if it's built into language, but we'll have a little bit more control over it. So we'll say a matcher is a function that returns a Boolean if uh, the value matches. And then let's define a matcher for a specific number. We'll say constant matcher for n is a value of function, is a matcher function. And it says if v.op is num and v.n is n, then return true, otherwise return false. I guess I don't really need to do it that way. That's silly. Let's do that. Um, there we go. Okay, and then we need some way to match numbers too. Um, so let's say we have a number n that's gonna be filled in. We'll say return func val bool. Um, if v.op is number, then save it, return true. Otherwise return false. And then we're gonna want a matcher for binary operators. And we'll say a left matcher and an op and a right matcher uh, is a matcher. And it ends up being um, if v.op, actually it just return v.op equals op and l of v.l and r of v.r. All right, I think that's all the matchers we need. And so now we should be able to say here case bin of num of a times num of b, declare a and b, and then we'll do, this is now a times b. Let's see if that worked. Not quite, not quite. Mismatch types matcher and bool. Oh, we have to apply it to v, apply to v. Cool, it looks like that's working. Um, you know, let's pull that out because we're gonna do a lot of those kind of rewrites. Let's say set num vval and int star v equals this. And we're overwriting v's temporary number here, but it's actually kind of okay because we'll never print it if it's a constant, so good enough. So now we'll say set num va times v. So that's pretty clean. That actually is pretty readable. Um, this is n. All right, so now that we have those matchers, it's totally reasonable to actually do more of these, whereas it kind of wasn't before. So if we have a times b, we could have a plus b. We could have a divided by b. We could have a mod b, all of these things. Divide by, mod, let's put these in the right order, just be pedantic. All right, now we're getting somewhere. We have 14 equals equals m0 equals zero, 25 times t17 plus one. Um, you know, I see a lot of times zeros though. So let's, let's tell it how to do that. So if we have a, a number, or actually if we have any value, and we need a matcher for any value, let's call it any um, vval matcher, and we'll say 
uh, return, I guess this should be a pointer p. Return func v val bool. And it's just always going to work. It's going to save v and p and return true. So we can say any x times constant 0, we want to do set num v 0. I guess I didn't need that x, but I will. Let's see. Uh, again, I forgot to call it on V. You can tell I'm going to keep doing that. All right. Um, so now all the time zeros are gone, but here's the time zero on the other side. So let's do the other one too. Bin of con zero times any X. All right, cool. Uh, so that is, that's good. That is getting rid of all of our silly uh, zero times and time zeros. But here's some zero pluses and divide by one. Let's deal with those next. If we have any x plus constant zero, then for that we want to replace v with x. That's a little tricky to do because we can't just say star v equals x. Um, well, can we? Let's try it. Star v equals star x. Let's see what happens. I think this is going to go badly, but um, it seems like it's working for now. We need to do the other one. Con 0 plus any x v. You can just imagine how much, how much more this would be if we were still writing these long expressions that we started with instead of using the matcher. All right, this is looking pretty good. And if we have a divide by 1, that also doesn't change anything. All right, now, now we're getting somewhere. Okay, um, are there any others? No, I think that's, that's pretty good. So the next thing to notice is that this 14 equals equals M0, this is always false. And uh, because we know that M0 is, is in the range one to nine. And so it would be nice to, you know, we could hard code that rule, but it would be nice to solve this generally and to compute the min and max of, of each possible expression. So let's do that. Now we have a choice about whether to put the results of this analysis into a map keyed by value like we did with stir before, or just into the val itself. And a map can be more memory efficient because you can throw it away when you're done. But just to keep things simple, let's just stick it into val for now. So here's val, let's move it up higher uh, so we can get to it. And then let's just put min max int. All right, so now as we walk through it, once we finish doing the rewrites, we're going to fill in min and max so that future references to uh, things, you know, lefts and rights will have min and max set up. So let's see, we're going to switch on v.op and we're going to want to make sure we do it on every single one. So here we'll panic min max of uh, v.op and that should die pretty quick. Good. All right, now we just got to fill in the cases. So if we have a number, then v.min and v.max are that number. If we have an input, then v.min is 1, v.max is 9. And otherwise, let's see, if we, have a v dot, if we have a plus, then the min is the min of the left plus the min of the right. Max is the max of the left plus the max of the right. Um, star. Now, star matters if, if, the pro, if the numbers are positive or negative, but we haven't seen any negative numbers yet in star. So let's pretend they're not there. Let's say if VL min is less than zero or VR min is less than zero, we'll just panic. We'll say min max of neg star. And otherwise, the min is the left min times the right min. And the max is the left max times the right max. All right, um, divide, same thing. In fact, for divide, I'm not even sure we ever saw a non-constant. So let's just, well, for this, we don't need that, but let's see. We'll do that. Um, for zero, can't divide by zero. I'll say v dot uh, min. You know what, I think, I think it, there aren't any divisions by non-constants. So let's just say if vr op is not equal to num, then panic min max of non-constant of divide. And then if and then uh, we'll let the compiler deal with or the program deal with negative divide. So the minimum here is going to be vrn, 
and the max is the max over VRN. All right, mod. Same thing, I think we've only ever seen uh, constant mods. So we'll do that. And then the min of a mod is zero and the max of a mod is the number minus one. And then for equality, the min is zero and the max is one, no matter what the arguments are. Cool, all right, well, it didn't panic, so that means we have min and max set. And now we need to actually use them. All right, so for using them, we can go back up here and say, suppose we see any x equals any y and x dot min is, or sorry, x dot max is less than y dot min or x dot min is, or no, the other way around, y dot max is less than x dot min. So if one of those is true, if their min and maxes don't overlap, then they can't possibly be true. And we can do set num v zero. And similarly, if they are equal, we could say, uh, and uh, x dot min equals y dot min. Hmm, it seems like we need a number. Oh wait, the only way they're gonna be equal is if they are a number. So we'll just say num a equals equals num b and a equals b. Then we'll set it to one. In fact, that and a equals b is probably not necessary because if they're not equal, then this other case would have run, but I'm gonna be paranoid and leave it there. We need a new y. I never remember to call these. All right, now we're getting somewhere. The, the mod 14 or the 14 equals equals m0 got optimized away. And now we're now this is getting simpler. We have t30 equals m0 plus 12. This equals t30 times one. Well, we don't need a times one in our program. Any x times constant one can go away. There we go. So now we have t53 is m0 plus 12 times 26. t58 is m1 plus six. 81 is 53 plus 58 times 26. You know, 53 is only used once. Hmm. Oh, I know what happened. In the dumper, we assumed that every value was reachable, but now they're not. So um, what we need to say is whether it's used at all. So let's see. So really we want to, for the usability, we don't want to walk over the program the other way. So we say minus one, i is bigger than zero, i minus minus equals prog of i. And we'll say, um, uh, let's see. We'll say used equals make map. Actually the count is the used. And so what we want to say is if the count of V is zero and it's not the very first one, then just keep going, don't count it. And otherwise we can count the children. So let's see, will that be better? Yes, wow, much better, okay. So now we've, we've thrown away all those temporaries we used to see. And now we've actually got a real expression. We've got clearly some sort of base 26 calculation going on here where you have M0 plus 12 times 26 plus M1 plus six, that whole thing times 26 plus M2 plus four and that whole thing times 26 plus that times 26. So that's one, two, three, four digits all sort of packed into a, a base 26 with a bottom zero uh, digit or number. And then uh, let's see, 137 gets used a couple times. We use it with M plus M4 mod 26 and plus M4 divided by 26. Now that's interesting because M4 is a small number and 137 is a multiple of 26. So this mod 26 is really just M4. And this divide by 26, because M4 is such a small number and this was already a multiple of 26, is just gonna be the same thing. And so we have more simplifications we can do. So let's go back to our simplifications and let's start with the mod. If we have a mod 26 of something times 26, uh, then with a plus of something small, then we can just replace it. So let's see. Let's say bin of num, uh, let's see, what do we want? We want something mod 26. So it's gonna be something mod a constant or a number, a. And then here we want, this is gonna be something plus a smaller something, any x. 
right? And remember to check on V, and we want X's max to be less than um, A, so that the mod is, is not, is not going to be affected by the plus. Or no, so that the mod is only going to be exactly that value. Actually, I suppose we don't even need that constraint, because for mod, we can just uh, keep the mod. Well, it, let's just do it this way. It'll be easier. It's a little more specific. And then here we need another bin of something times a number b, where b is the same as a. So and a equals b and that. And so then this is any y, I guess. And if we have this whole sequence of conditions, then this x is the answer. So star v equals star x. See how that goes. All right. Now we're getting somewhere. Let me make sure that was really true. So what were we supposed to do? We're supposed to have this T157 is 134 plus M4 mod 26, and we're supposed to just keep the M4. So now T157 should be, let's save that, it should be that. And it's probably still being used multiple times, so it should show up. It should be M4 plus minus 7 equals M5 equals 0. That's correct. All right. Great, and now because this, the rest of it was now only used once, it got substituted into an even bigger expression, which is pretty great. All right, so little by little, we are starting to understand this program and the compiler is starting to understand this program. Um, so that's great. Um, is there anything else we can do to simplify? Let's see, so we've got these sort of long expressions and times T157. All right, it looks like there's not much left for us to simplify, so let's start attacking it the other way. Because what we wanna do is we wanna get this expression down to zero. And so if this expression needs to go down to zero, um, let's print what the min and max of each one of these things is. So in the dumper, we can do, uh, let's see, when we do this, we'll say, I'm gonna use printf finally, percent s equals times v, and we'll show the min and the max. So v dot name x v dot min v dot max. Okay, so it knows that the min and max of this expression are zero and one. The min and max of this one are much larger, zero and thirteen, zero and one, zero and one, zero and one, and so on. And so here, um, you know, if we have these are all first of all min zero or min positive numbers. So there's no negative numbers. So if we have a sum that's going to sum to zero. It means that both of these operands of the sum have to be zero. So that has to be zero, and that has to be zero. And we know M13 plus four is not zero, so that means T381 must be zero. So that has to be zero. And if that has to be zero, it means that this equality is zero, and so it means that this is one, because this is an equality, which means that this equals this. So we could probably teach the compiler how to do this kind of logic and start forcing values so that the final result ends up being zero. So let's actually do that. Let's see. Um, we're going to want to write a new pass. We'll call it force of the program. And we'll say we're going to force program value. And it'll rewrite the program to force the final expression to zero as much as it can. And so we're going to want to do the same sort of thing we did before, where we walk over it backwards, because we want to start at the bottom and see that we want to force that to zero, and then uh, work backwards to figure out what we want to force above to certain values. So we'll do v equals prog of i, and then we're going to want to do something switching on op of v. Or maybe we're going to look for patterns, so maybe we'll just switch. All right, so we're going to have to keep track of what we're forcing things to. So let's call that, um, let's do force make a map of val to int. All right, um, all right, let's see. So then we want to switch. Uh, well, let's just panic. We'll see force v.op. We'll see what we need to write. Force is declared and not used. That is true. All right, so we need to do plus. All right, so let's, let's do plus. Let's say if we have a plus, then 
Well, first of all, if we don't know what we're forcing it to, then we kind of don't care and we can keep going. So let's say f ok equals force of v. If not ok, then just continue. Otherwise, uh, we know that we want to force prog of len prog minus 1 to 0. Let's see what happens. Yes, 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 I know. Okay, so we went back to this plus. So if we have a plus and we're trying to force to F, it means that um, each of the two sides has to get forced. So we want to kind of keep the running minimum here in force. Let's say update, um, you know what, let's, let's make this the max. This is the max that we want. Let's call it max, I'll call it M. Uh, M, great, we don't need that anymore. We want to update the max for a particular value to m. And we're going to want to say func. I'm going to say that if, if the max is already uh, lower than m, then that's fine. And otherwise, we're going to want to do something else. So we'll say if old ok equals max of v ok and old is less than m, then we're just done. Otherwise, max of v equals m. And now we'll say update max of prog. Well, it doesn't really matter. We know what update max is going to do for that one. All right, good. So now for plus, we can finally do something. We can say update max of the left to have um, you know, the current max minus the minimum on the right, because the right is definitely going to be at least its minimum. So that leaves a maximum value of m minus the minimum for the left. And I mean, the same thing for the right. The maximum value is the for the right is the max overall minus the left's minimum. All right, cannot convert. Yeah, this is v.op. All right, now we need to do star. Now we checked before that star was never uh, negative on the divisor, so that's great for us. So we can say if, um, if er min, hmm, what's the rule for max? Let's see. So if you have an overall ma max of a v, then you want to say v dot l's max has to be at least that divided by vr uh, min, because that's going to take away at least that much. And v dot r, m over v l min, but if vr min is zero, then we have a problem. v l can be as big as it wants. How's that? All right, now we need to force equals equals. Now that's an interesting one. Um, and that one, you know, at that point, I think we're gonna need a matcher. So let's go back and match these. We'll say uh, bin of any x plus any y and bin of any x times any y r x y val update max x minus y, x, y, this is actually nicer to read, x, y, y, x, x, y. All right, what are you unhappy about? All right, integer divided by zero, cool. That should be y and that should be x. Great, so now we have to do equals equals. And we saw before what the program looked like. You know, let's, let's not do the panic anymore. Let's just let it run. We have this weird equals, nested equals equals, where you have an equals equals zero equals equals m5. And so what this really is, is forcing this whole expression to zero would be to force this expression to one, which would be to force this expression to equal that expression. So let's just look for that one pattern. We'll say bin of any x, bin of bin of any x equals any y. That whole thing has to equal con zero. Um, yes, that's the whole thing, v. So if that is the expression that we're holding, then it means we have to force x and y to be the same. So we'll say println force x, y. And let's say x dot init, y dot init. And 
we'll put a bit of space between them so we can see better. All right, so we have to force that to equal that. Um, so instead of printing it, let's actually just change the opcode here. Let's say v.op equals force, v.left equals x, v.right equals y, and then we'll say having forced it, um, we'll say that min and max are zero. All right. I expected that to change something. What happened? Um, I think the problem is that before I felt a little uncomfortable about the star V equals star X. Where was that? That was here. I think what we really want to do is rewrite the uses of V to be uses of X. So we probably want to keep track of, of just a map of, of where we go. Maybe we'll put that into V. How to, what, what we should forward V to. So every time we see V after that, we'll forward it. And so then uh, here we'll say to start with V forwards to itself, but then <clears throat> V's left equals V's left forward, V's right, so V's right forward. And then here when we want to redirect, we'll say V forward to X and V forward to X so that we don't have multiple copies of the same expression floating around. Well, it didn't like that. Um, well, I guess if V.L is not equal nil, Still doesn't like that. Hmm. It appears that we have v dot l. My forwarding is not right. V forward equals v. This was supposed to set up a thing so I didn't have to check and see if v l forward was not nil or not, but that's fine. We can just do it this way. Still unhappy. V dot R dot op. Did I do that wrong again? Yes. All right, there we go. We're back. We're back. But it's still not updating the force. I really expected that when this matched, and it is going to match, right? That it would change something in the printed program. Unless, nope, no, we got to match. Force prog dump prog. Match v.name t381. Oh, there it is. It is forcing it. They just weren't looking in the right place. Great. Cool. All right, so uh, t381 says you have to force m13 to be the same as that. Good, 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 good. So now let's, fi let's finish the rest of the force. We need to figure out how to force a divide. Okay, so let's see. If we're forcing... Well, remember the divides are constant, so that's going to help. We have a divide by a number a. Declare that. So to force a particular number to be max m, it means that the overall thing for x has to be x times a plus a minus 1 is the biggest it could possibly be. What's wrong? Oh, I forgot the comma. Oh, um, what's wrong? It's the max times a. Okay, now we got numbers. Numbers are good. That, that's pretty easy, I think. Let's put that up here. Case num a. We'll say if a is bigger than m, then that's impossible. You cannot make a less than m. And otherwise, it's done. Can I compare num of a is true? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, input. Now we're getting somewhere. Case, um, oh, we don't have a matcher for input. Let's make a matcher for input. Let's see, it'll be just like the number matcher, except it's input. All right, so if we have the input for A, then let's just say println input AM. V. All right, so now input 9 has to be at most that. I think we can deal with that. 7 has to be at most that. 4 has to be at most that. 2 is at most that. That's all great. You know what? If uh, 
M is bigger than or equal to 10, I don't care. You know, in fact, we could generalize that. We could say, if it's not okay, then that's fine. And if V dot max is already less than or equal to M, then we don't care. There we go. We may not actually see any more inputs. Nope. So we don't even need this case anymore. Great. All right. So now we've actually gotten pretty far. We say M4 plus minus 7 has to equal M5. And then this whole thing happens. And then this has to force equal to M6. But we don't really know what that's going to be. So it looks like we need to do a little bit of simplifying on this expression. We have to somehow get that down. Um, but we're getting there. We've, we've actually discovered a lot. Uh, so let's start maybe here and say, well, TC368 mod 26. What is that? This thing, mod 26. Um, let's see, that's a very big number, possibly. And we want it to equal M13. Hmm. Maybe we should start at the top. This one is needs to be forced to M6 mod 26 plus minus 13 has to equal m6. So for that to equal m6, um, we know that the max has to be m6 too. So let's see what happens if we do that. And we'll do update max of, uh, let's see, update max x has to be at most y dot max, and y has to be at most x dot max. Didn't like that. Mod. Cool. Okay. Let's do uh, p dot init and the max. Let's see what we're, what we're dealing with. We have this thing has to be max 23. All right. Um, well, let's see what the right side constant really is. So this is something mod 26 has to be at most 23. Well, um, let's see. Let's get let's drop the panic and see what it looks like. There's something mod 26. It's probably this one has to be at most 23. And so uh, this thing here hmm, doesn't really work either. What are we doing wrong? There's got to be a way to make forward progress here. So if we just look at this, we've got a times 26 plus something times 26 plus something times 26 plus something times 26. And then at the end here, we do a divide by 26. And then we do a uh, times this stuff. And this thing here is the result of an equality. Oh, but that's a constant. That's a constant because we forced it. And so we know it's zero, but we're not recognizing it as a constant. Let's change our number, our constant matcher. Say that's okay. Or v dot min is n and v dot max is n. And similarly here, we'll say if it's a num, then that's great. And otherwise, if v dot min equals v dot max, that's also okay. All right, well, that didn't seem to do very much, but um, 25 times t157. Oh, but we did the forcing and now we have to re-optimize. This is another pretty common compiler problem is that one, one optimization pass makes other optimization passes find more things. So you have to figure out um, what you're going to do. So now, now that we're running the optimizer again, you have to figure out what order you're going to run them in. We have to deal with forcing in here. And in forced, uh, the result of force is always zero, right? The max equals zero. We got a zero. So I think that that means that it thinks that we're, um, we've computed a zero. Unfortunately, we've lost all the information about what we actually did. So let's change the printer. Where did dump go? There it is. Let's make it print. We'll say if count of v is two or v dot op equals force, then you're required to print the instruction. Okay, okay, this is pretty good. M4 plus minus 7 forces to M5. This forces, well, this is not so good because we don't actually know how to do that. 
Although maybe we do know how to do that. That's just something here divided by 26, but it's a small number plus something times 26. So let's actually just simplify that. We did something similar before. We had this one, which was something times b plus, you know, it's always 26. Let's just, let's just make this easier to read. It's not quite as general, but it'll do. So if we do that, we still get the same answers. And so now the other case here is that if we have uh, something times 26 plus something else divided by 26, and this is not too big, then the divide is just going to get the other one back. So we get y. There we go. That looks pretty nice. So now we know that m5 has to equal m4 plus minus 7. Uh, m6 has to equal m3 plus 5 plus minus 13. Maybe we want to clean that up. m0 plus 12 mod 26. Well, we can fix that because m0 plus 12 is less than 26. So let's say if we have any... Uh, let's just start over. If we have any x, any x mod 26. We could generalize that, but I don't really care. Um, any x mod 26 where uh, x dot min, sorry, x dot max is less than 26, then that's just x. All right, this looks really good. Now, every single one of these says, you know, model digit five is equal to model digit four plus minus seven, and model digit six is model digit three plus five plus minus 13. So we need to do this double add. Let's clean that one up. Say bin of bin of any x, any x plus number y plus uh, number, sorry, b, v. Um, you know what, there's actually nothing to forward to here. So we're gonna have to do that in force. Um, because, you know, in a real compiler, you could make up a new piece of expression and stick it in, but since we only have the, the values in the prog, and it's not a simple forwarding, it's not easy to do. So we'll just do it here instead. We'll say that if we have, uh, let's see, so I guess I don't need that. This force we're gonna make a little bit um, more sophisticated. We're not going to take any x, we're going to take only inputs. So we'll say input i, that's uh, really bin of input i plus a constant a. So we have bin of input i plus constant a equals equals another constant b. Um, no, equals equals another input j. Then we're going to do force and we'll say uh, e dot n equals a. And so then we'll print that we'll change the printer for force. Let's see where would that be? That's over here. Init case force. We'll say return from that s printf force percent v equals equals plus percent d equals equals percent v v dot l dot name, v dot n, v dot r dot name, and find j. That is true. Didn't like that. Hmm, we don't have x and y anymore. That's okay, we don't need them because now we know their inputs. All right, so we've lost a little bit. Let's see. Um, my force printer is not working. Let's fix that. Uh, why is it not working? Case force. Oh, because we didn't do it in dump. We need to do it in dump too. Can only have to do it in dump. If v dot op is force, then that. results expected. That is true. Thank you. Hmm. Oh, I see. Yeah, I didn't write down everything. It was, it was telling me something useful before. <laughs> um, where were we? Up here. We have I plus, yeah, so 
we actually need this whole thing. Well, let's go back to any's. Any x equals any y, x, y. Yeah. Okay. We don't need i and j anymore. Okay. So now we're back to having something useful. Forcing that plus that equals that, plus that equals that. Great. So. Except I don't want name here. I want the stir of v.l and stir of v.r. Great. Okay, so I want to get these to go away though, the double plus. That was the whole point of this. So when I was in force, there it is. So if we get the double plus, that's going to be this plus. This is going to be another number, bin of any of x plus num of b. So if we get either one of these, then we're OK. We'll say a plus b. That looks fine. That looks fine. Unexpected literal plus. Oh, we forgot that comma. There we go. Should have been x and y. And 3 plus 5 plus minus 13. So this is not matching still. We do false and and, still getting the same. No, it's doing something. Because this is what it looks like now. If we change it, oh no, it does look the same. Okay, so that's just not matching. All right, um, why is it not matching? Bin of any plus b plus a equals equals any y. I don't know why it's not matching. But you know, we can we can do this. That's fine. This is good enough. Because now that we have these, we can go one more time over the program and we can say um, get me the right model number. And we'll say uh, max model of prog. And so we just need to have a new function called max model. We'll put it here. Max model prog val int. So we're going to make our model number with our 14 digits. And then we're just going to walk over the program and read those force instructions. And now we can use the matching that we were trying to write before, and it'll be OK. I think what's going on is that opt is actually re-optimizing some of this stuff. And so what we're seeing printed is the output of opt and not the output of the other one. In fact, we could check this if I just finish this off so that it's happy. Let's get rid of uh, this and this. Missing return, yes. Yeah, so, so this is what it looks like when we're actually in force. It's got all these complicated things. And the second round of optimization is what's actually simplifying it. So that's why our matching wasn't finding the things, because it doesn't see this, because that's before the second opt. So now we can, but now we're after the second opt, so we can actually do those sort of things. We can say, if we get a bin where we have another bin, which is x plus any a, and that's plus any b, those shouldn't be any, those should be num, and that's forced to an input j. So let's see, I did this wrong. This should be, the bin bin was right, input i plus a plus b forced to j. That looks good. So if our a, b, i, j, int, then we'll do a plus equals b, and we'll just print them for now. Um, I, A, J. Uh, that bin, oh, we need three bins. 
and is declared but not used. That is true. Let's do that after we print the program. Cannot use value A. Let's type value into any. That's right, because I didn't want these to be any. I said I wanted them to be num. All right, we didn't match anything. Cool. That's great. Um, force equals equals. Oh, right, we didn't rewrite it the way I was talking about before. What does force do? What are the arguments to force? Oh, no, we did, we did it right before. Um, this is not there anymore. It's just... Yeah, that's what's really going. No, no, that's not quite right. Oh, I really screwed this up. I shouldn't have done that numbering thing in force, the force constructor. Hmm. Yeah, this was silly. I shouldn't have, I shouldn't have uh, parsed this so much. We really just care about this being force of any x equals equals any y equals equals zero. So let's just do that. Go back to the way it used to be. Unexpected paren. Yep. No, wait. There's only two binary operators. There should be two bins. Paren there. What? Cannot use dot slash. Oh, okay, fine. We're back here. Great. Um, I'm using ampersand a as a bin. This is num. This is num. B is declared not used. That is true now. Okay, now we're back. Now we actually have what we want. That's the zero from the program. This is saying m3 plus minus eight equals m6. And we still just have to handle the, the simpler case the one where there's not an extra level here. Let me get rid of this. It's just input plus i force to j. Yeah, I know. Oh, I, the word case is the problem. Plus equals colon. All right, now we have all of them. Four minus seven, five, three minus eight, six. This is good, this is very good. All right, so now finally, say, now we need to figure out how to maximize M. So actually, you know, a slice of ints is not really wide. Let's, let's do a string. So let's make this a slice of byte, 14. And let's make them all be question marks so that we can tell if we forget one. And then we wanna maximize uh, m of i and m of j subject to m of i plus a equals m of j. All right, so if a is bigger than zero, then that means that m of i has to be small. So then m of i equals nine minus a, and m of j is gonna be nine. And otherwise, if a is less than zero, then that's really m of i minus minus a. So m of i can be nine m of j can be nine plus a, which is minus minus a. Um, all right, but these need to be bytes. And let's see, great. Nine, nine, seven, nine, nine, two, one, two, nine, four, nine, nine, six, seven. That is plausible. Let's see. Hey, we got it. All right, continue to part two. All right, now it says get the smallest one instead. Okay, well, we can do that. That's easy enough. Min model. And all right, so let's just delete these so we don't confuse ourselves. All right, so if m of i plus a equals m of j, a is bigger than zero, then we want m of i can be one now. m of i equals one. m of j is gonna be uh, one plus a, no, m of j equals m of i 
yeah, plus a. That looks good. And otherwise, uh, if a is less than zero, then m of j can be one. And m of i can be byte of one minus a, because a is negative, that will add to it. And we just have to print that. Clean this up while we're here. All right, let's see. Hey, we got our stars. All right, have a nice day.